making so much merry, spitting so much wine, and we feel so much pleasure. Sometimes we become the president of any country, prime minister of any country, very beautiful wife, qualified children. Also some beggars come to us and we can give so much donation to them. Then why to chant and remember Krishna, Supreme Personality of God? What is the use? Hmm? Living all these things, why is it to bhajan? Hmm? I've heard so, much, so many times with so many prosperous Indian and learned persons, also I think that this doubt may come to anyone. I want that Prem Prajan Prabhu shall speak something about this. This is the stand anywhere nearby. You can come here, no harm. No place of people. In very simple words, that means for the house of the man. Takshu Nilitam Deina Tasmai Sri Guru Vainama Guru Vai Gaura Chandaya Radhika Yeta Dale Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Yamamur Nama Vancha Kaupatur Vistati Vasindu Plevacha Puthitanam Pavanipyo Vaishna Vipyo Nama Nama First of all I'd like to offer thousands and thousands of most humble and respectful dhanavats to Panjali at the lotus feet of my beloved Diksha Guru, Om Vishnu Pahada, Stotra Satarupa, Nagacharya, Varya, Sri Srimad, Bhakti Rantana, Swami Maharaj. Secondly, I offer my obeisances at the lotus feet of my Guru Varga, and I offer my obeisances at the lotus feet of all the assembled professionals. So Guru Dev has ordered me to speak something about the necessity of doing bhajan. So, in this world, it appears that there are so many opportunities for happiness. One may become very, very highly qualified and very learned, and this will bring so much respect. One may have physical beauty, and this will bring so much admiration. One may be born in an aristocratic family and one may be very wealthy. Yet, despite all of the opportunities afforded to us in this material world, still, so much suffering will come. One, everyone has to take birth and birth is a very painful experience. Everyone will have to grow old. We can try to hold back the advancement of uh, this old age coming to us for some time. One may do some exercise and have some facelift or anything like this. But still, old age will come and no one can stop it. 
one will have to undergo so many diseases if one can even live to that age many people they don't live to old age they are killed murdered they die very um, just last week one devotee from here in Wales he had he was a very young devotee in his 30s he had a brain hemorrhage and left all of a sudden unexpectedly many diseases will come and then finally death will come and after death again birth will come hmm? and we don't know where we will have to take the reactions of the activities that we've performed in this life and previous lives so many many sufferings will come to us in this world there is no way to avoid them Srimad Bhagavatam it is stated Tasyaiva hei to prayate to kovido nalabhite yad brahmatamu pariyada talabhite dukava ranyata sukam kalena savatra gabira ranghasa that those who are actually intelligent and philosophically inclined should endeavor only for that purposeful end in other words for devotional service one should only endeavor for that pers for purposeful, pers purposeful end which is not obtained even by wondering from the topmost planet in the universe Brahma Loka down to the lowest planet Patala Loka one may say but if I spend all my time trying to attain God consciousness then how will I be happy but uh, Srimad Bhagavatam says Talabhite Dukava Ranyata Sukam Kalena Savatra Gabira Ranghasa as far as happiness derived from sense enjoyment is concerned it comes automatically in the course of time just as miseries come without making any endeavor so people in this world they're working so hard for happiness but actually the happiness and distress which is coming to us it is fixed it is a result of our previous activities this is called karma by our karma by our good activities some happiness will come by our impious activities some suffering will come so this is fixed one cannot change this so those who are, who are endeavoring very hard for happiness in this world they will not get more or less than what is coming to them by their karma so one should not endeavor for this hmm? no one is making a, an endeavor no one is making a plan uh, to bring suffering no one thinks I'll make a plan that my children will get disease and die no one is making a plan that oh my house will burn down no one is making a plan that someone will break into my house and steal my wealth yet all of these things are happening anyway so in the same way that without endeavor miseries are forced upon us in the same way happiness will come to us so we should not endeavor for these things but rather we should just endeavor to awaken our dormant love of God why? because this will put an end permanently to all of our sufferings and Sri Chaitanya Chaitamrita stated Krishna boli sehi jiva anadi bahi muka atayeva mayatare sangsaradi dukha Krishna boli sehi jiva the jiva, the living entity has forgotten Krishna anadi bahi muk and he he's turned his face away from the Supreme Lord Atayeva Maya Tari Deya Sangsara Diduka Therefore Maya this God's energy His material energy which has manifested this whole material universe it is uh, inflicting so many sufferings upon the Jiva uh, so that he will wake up uh, and ask himself Who am I? What am I doing here? Why am I suffering? And what is the goal of my life? At that time, if he has sufficient uh, piety, sukriti, if he has rendered any service knowingly or unknowingly to Hari Guru or Vaishnav, then he will meet. Uh, when this question comes in his heart, who am I? How can I make a solution to the problems of life? He can meet a bona fide guru, a spiritual master, a direct manifestation of the mercy of the Supreme Lord. Guru Krishna Rupa Hana Shastra Paramana Guru Rupa Krishna Kripa Karen Bhaktagani Chaitanya Chaitamrita says that the spiritual master is the manifestation of Krishna Rupa he is a direct manifestation of the Supreme Lord and he appears before the uh, aspiring 
disciple uh, to bestow upon him the mercy of Krishna. So, in the eleventh canto, there's one verse. Nidayam adyam sulabham sudularbham plavam sukalpam guru guru kanadaram mayana kulena nabasva veritam pumam bhavad bin natretsa atmaha. So in this verse, it is stated, Nidayam adyam sulabham sudularbham that this human form of life affords us the opportunity to inquire into what is our real ultimate self-interest. There are 8,400,000 species of life. Insects, worms, fish, blades of grass, animals, mammals and reptiles and birds and so many species. When the jiva, on account of his karma, is traveling through these species, in any species, he cannot inquire into his real self-interest. Who, who am I and who is God and what is our relationship? But when, after traveling through many, many species, we attain the human form of life, then we have some... Uh, we, ha we are not callous, but we are actually conscious. We should not be, ca be callous like the animals, but we should be conscious to inquire what is the goal of life. So having attained this human form of life, this human form of life is said to be like a body, uh, a boat. Pavam Sukhopam Gunukana Dharam. This body is a boat. And it is the boat that the jiva, the soul, hmm, that which is actually us, our spiritual essence, which is uh, traveling on the machine of this body, 